Hi, we'll basically cover two important functions that you can do with VirtualBox and that's importing and exporting virtual machines. Um, two cases or two instances where you may want to do this is whenever you have uh, a virtual machine that you want to share with someone or someone wants to share with you. What they can do is they can export the virtual machine and and send it off to you and let you download it and try to reproduce or do anything they're trying to uh, show to you with everything loaded exactly like they have it. Another method you could use as a snapshot, but we'll cover that later. So, uh, you know, when you take a class online, uh, the professors and TAs may provide a, a virtual machine for you that they want you to use with all the required tools and programs installed in it. So, real quick, uh, it's, it's pretty straightforward to do. You just come into the file and import appliance, and you'll notice that you can just browse to your file, and I'll browse to mine. and I've got some set up. I've got some that I created for myself already here in my clones directory and you can see you're able to import both OVA and OVF files and real quick I'll, I'll kinda just show you an, an OVA is very similar to an OVF. It's nothing more than um, an OVF file and a VDMK file that are zipped together in a compressed file. So uh, inside of an OVA, if you come, if you have something, you can export and extract files from a compressed uh, file. You can just do, uh, I'll just extract this here to to show you what's in it. So I extracted those files, and you can see it's it's extracting to this folder. And when you come into the folder, you can see there's an OVF and a VMDK file. So basically... Um, OVA and OVF are, are related in that the, an OVA is just this VMDK which is your virtual disk uh, that's used by the virtual machine and the OVF file which is your configuration for your virtual machine so just kinda wanted to explain what that was so I will just for demonstration purposes select uh, the desktop 64 version and I'm gonna go ahead and delete this folder that I just created so I'll do that selected the OVA file that I want to import click the next button and there's multiple settings that were set up whenever it was exported if you want to you can change some of them but I just you leave it the same typically and then click the import button and it will start inputting and I'll let it finish up Okay, now that it's finished importing, uh, the first thing I typically do is come in to the virtual machine and I go into my settings and verify that the network settings are, are set up. So here you can see it's set up for NAT. Um, you know, you, you can change this to your personal preference. This, this adapter is just going to be used to access the internet. So you can use NAT if you just want to use NAT to your virtual machine, uh, to your host, running through your host. Uh, you could also use NAT network or bridged adapter. Um, I, I typically just like to use NAT. So unless you have a personal preference, just leave whatever they have uh, configured for you. And you can go ahead and start it up. And you'll see it booting. And once it boots, you'll be able to log in. And you will have access to the virtual machine and operating system that uh, someone has shared with you or that you created as a backup previously. And once it's completed booting up, you'll get your prompt to log in. And you know, you'll know you have to be provided or know the username password to log in. And now you have access to the Ubuntu desktop or whatever environment they created and shared with you. And you can see your IP addresses uh, for your NIC that you just created so we're going to be using this IP address through our NAT interface and whenever you're done you can just go ahead and uh, I'll close it down just to show you and then next I'll show you how to export a virtual machine 
Finally, we'll cover how to export a virtual machine that you have configured like you want and you want to either share it with someone else or save a backup uh, slash snapshot. There's another way to save a backup which we'll cover later, but if you wanted to export and have an OVA file um, on your disk for use later, this is how you would do that. And the OVA file will be the format we talked about earlier with both the OVF file and the virtual disk. Um, so basically, it's really quick and easy. You just go to File, Export Appliance, and if you have more than one virtual machine up and running, they'll show up here. So you would select the one you want, and I typically leave the default for the format unless you have a, another preference, and navigate to where you want to store the file. Give it a name. I'm just going to name this test. And there's some settings that you can do. I usually don't mess with these. I just keep them the same unless you have a preference. No need to change them. And then click the export button. And it will start exporting. And when it's, once it's done exporting, you'll have an OVA file ready to share. Thanks.